Countdown to March Madness with HTS's college basketball coverage. Over 40 matchups in February. Don't miss the Capitals as they face off against the Flyers, Rangers, Penguins, and World Champion Oilers. When it comes to sports, HTS covers all the angles. If you're not watching HTS in February, you don't know what you're missing. Do your old windows stick, leak? Who can you trust to install new ones? Hi, Bob Vila for Sears, the home improvement professionals. If you've been struggling with old, leaky windows, you should call Sears for high-quality, high-performance replacement windows. Doors, too. Sears has a wide range of high-quality vinyl and wood models available in whatever style you want. Custom-sized for your home. Choose replacement windows from Sears and get energy-efficient dual paint or the latest low-E glass to help lower fuel bills. Easy cleaning, like this tilt-in you can clean from inside the house. Sears guarantees your satisfaction and provides flexible financing with up to 10 years to pay for windows and a whole lot more. Count on the home improvement professionals at Sears, the most trusted name around the house. Call 1-800-228-6000 to arrange a free in-home Sears install windows estimate. 1-800-228-6000. As expected, it was an extremely physical first period. Plenty of fights, plenty of hitting, some penalties, and the Capitals, with their only power play of the period, connect with a great goal from Michael Pavanka, and they take a 1-0 lead over the Philadelphia Flyers here on the Sunday afternoon at the Capitol Center. And welcome back to Capital Hockey on Home Team Sports. I'm Al Koken, and joined once again by Capital General Manager David Poyle. First of all, David, congratulations on your Timmy Award last night, awarded to you at the Touchdown Club. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the honor? Well, it, I think it's uh, more of a recognition for uh, uh, the hockey, the su success of hockey here in the last uh, few years. We've certainly uh, seen a lot of progress on the ice and a lot of growth and interest uh, off the ice. And uh, outside of that, or uh, just uh, for the for the fact that I've lasted this long, so it's, it's probably one of the two, Al. But uh, anyway, I think it uh, shows a, at a, a function as big as the Touchdown Club. It was the 56th annual uh, uh, dinner, and there was the likes of uh, Marv Levy and George Seifert, uh, Jim Kelly from the NFL, and uh, a whole array of other uh, top people in uh, sports. And the fact that hockey is uh, starting to get some recognition, uh, you know, not only in the Washington area, but uh, throughout the whole nation, I think is uh, bodes well for the game. There was much made when you swung your deals to acquire John Cordick, to acquire Ken Sabrin, Ally of Freddy, I guess, could also, to a certain point, factor into that about adding toughness to this team. Did you like what you saw in the first period, the way your team handled uh, an aggressive Philadelphia team? Well, again, this has been a fairly inconsistent season for the Capitals, and uh, when you go from being uh, almost the most penalized team in the league to the least penalized team in the league, there's obviously that something is wrong or something has drastically changed with your hockey club. Uh, Personnel-wise, we, we lost uh, a couple of people. Uh, the first one uh, that uh, comes to mind the most who played really tough was Scott Stevens. And uh, obviously our club w was not uh, playing very well and we we're a fifth place team as we are today and we needed to do something uh, different. And if it's uh, to play more aggressive, if that's what helps us win and that's what we'll do. Uh, I think, again, playing against the Flyers, I mean, this is uh, the type of games we've had uh, ever since I've been uh, involved it uh, it's getting down to the crunch time and in the divisional games and I think uh, both both teams want to win very badly and I think uh, aggressive play is uh, going to be part of uh, what what is the, the game plan for both teams let's head to the phones to Brian's Road Maryland Marianne hello um yes I have two questions on Rod Langway um number one what is his condition and number two when will he be back thank you well, Rod has a, uh, a back problem that has now been, I, I believe, almost uh, a month in, in time. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a structural problem, as we're being told by the doctors. It's a muscle-related problem. But nonetheless, uh, Rod has had his good days and, unfortunately, more, more bad days. And he still has a lot of stiffness in his uh, lower back and at the top of his legs. The doctors are still very optimistic that, uh, uh, that he is going to get better and come back to play. Uh, Rod has uh, skated periodically in the last week. Uh, he was riding the bike earlier today, and uh, uh, we're, we're shooting for him to go on this next road trip, which means we leave on Thursday. That might be a little optimistic, but uh, that's our goal right now. 
to Yorktown, Virginia. And David, you're our next caller. Hello. Yes, uh, Mr. Poyle, a couple of parts of my question. Is there any chance the Capitals will send more players to Hampton Roads this season and in the future? And do the Capitals actively scout the East Coast Hockey League? And if so, are you aware of the Admiral's free agent, Brian Martin, who has 53 goals in 47 games? Uh, we would like to uh, send more players to Hampton Roads, and probably in the future we will do that. We have uh, today, uh, Baltimore Skipjacks play tonight in Baltimore. I think there's 11 players out uh, in our organization due to uh, injuries, which is an extraordinary high number of players, and that makes it tough here on the Capitals in Baltimore and then filters down to, to Hampton. So uh, right now uh, there's no help. As far as Brian Martin, uh, Brian Martin got called up, uh, played for Moncton one game against Baltimore and uh, scored a goal, so I'm very much aware of uh, Brian Martin. All right, let's go to New Carrollton, Maryland, down the road here. You're our next caller. Hello. Yeah, I was wondering why you're keeping Johansson and Leute, and I wanted to know where Leach was and why he's not playing. Stephen Leach has a, a, a sore shoulder. He should uh, go with our club on this next road trip and probably scheduled to get back in the lineup uh, next uh, Friday. Cal Johansson is uh, playing on a regular basis. Uh, to me, he's having the, his best year of uh, pro uh, so far. Right now, he's playing with Kevin Hatcher. He's probably getting more ice time than he has ever had before, either with Buffalo or, or the Capitals. So we see uh, Cali star rising, if you will. As far as Mike Liu, tough situation right now. Uh, in the early, early part of the year, uh, Mike was our, our number one goalie, if you will, because Donnie Beaupre had injuries. Uh, since Donnie's come back, they've more or less shared until recently where uh, Terry Murray has chosen to go with the hot hand, uh, which I don't think anyone can argue. Uh, Donnie has certainly had the hot hand. And uh, again, we'll have to see as the season goes on. We start to play a lot of games in a, in a, a short amount of time, and I know we're going to need uh, two goalies to play then. Let's move on to Bowling Air Force Base and Lem. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. Boyle, uh, I was at the game last Saturday, and I want to thank the uh, Capital Organization for letting Air Force Art Association tape the game for the troops over in Saudi. I really appreciate that, and good luck to you all. Thank you very much. Well, obviously it was our pleasure. I mean, it's, uh, I think there's a lot more important things going on in this world uh, right now than this game, but uh, maybe the fact the sports, the Capitals, uh, the entertainment business, if you will, maybe should be fairly important to uh, take people's minds off of what's uh, going on, on in other parts of the world, and hopefully we can uh, help ease some of the uh, pain that some people are going through right now. On to Rockville, Maryland. Mike, go ahead. Um, I was wondering about, like, if you were maybe going to acquire Eric Lindros and, like, maybe you want to trade the round for it. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to. Uh, all the above, uh, and so would uh, 20 other uh, general managers. Uh, um, right now, it looks like the, the two teams that are going to be in uh, last place in the National Hockey League would be the Toronto Maple Leafs, which means the New Jersey Devils would get Eric Lindros or the Quebec Nordiques. Uh, the Minnesota North Stars, who were lower in the standings a while back, have really been playing really good hockey now, so it's sort of a, a two-team race. Let me ask you, is Pierre Paget honestly entertaining offers for the number one pick? He's been quoted as saying he certainly would listen if the package was right. Well, I, again, I don't, I don't think he is. Uh, again, you... What, what is he trading right now, for, for example? I mean, he's not sure he has a number one pick, so if I was to call him and go after the number one pick and give up, uh, which obviously be a tremendous amount, uh, and then Quebec played better and they didn't end up with the, uh, the first pick, uh, you know, David Poyle could be in trouble for doing something like that. So I think you're going to have to see what happens after the season, and if Quebec does indeed have the, uh, the pick, let's see what uh, Pierre has to say. He's, if, he's, if he said it publicly and he means it, he'll be talking to all 20 teams, I guarantee you that. Let's head back to the phones. Go ahead, our next caller. James, go ahead, from Wheaton. Yeah, hi. I got a question for Dave Poyle. Poyle. Um, I wanted to know uh, what the bargain was with Scott Stevens and uh, Jeff Courtenau. Um, I heard we got, like, a few first-round draft choices. If you could re-explain that deal that we got through him. Right. And well, I wouldn't call it a bargain. Uh, again, <laughs> play, playing without Scott Stevens uh, this, this season certainly hasn't been uh, uh, easy, nor, nor do I think it has been uh, fair. The Capitals are going to be compensated, and it appears very well in the future, but the future is going to be a lot of years down the road. We have uh, either two or five first-round picks starting uh, this June from the St. Louis Blues. If the St. Louis Blues do not deliver to the Capitals a pick in the top seven in this year's entry draft, then we know for sure we'll have five consecutive first-round picks. So it's either going to be two in the first seven or five consecutive first-round picks. Uh, again, that should be uh, great for our future, but uh, as you probably know by now these these are 18 year old players that we're drafting and it takes a number of years before they get to Washington and so the goal is for Terry Murray and myself to get signed to long-term contracts so they can all be around when, 
when they're when they're good enough to play. All right, David, thanks again for the visit. Capital General Manager David Poyle. We'll back with the second period after these messages here on Home Team Sports. Yeah, we, we just scored. No, I didn't see Kevin get hit. Kev, you okay? I wind up in the hospital, and Bob gets a winning goal. I couldn't let Kevin miss the part. I was having a pretty good time where I was. Friends deserve the best. Friendship. Just being there. The crisp, clean taste of Canada's best beer, La Pat's Blue. I have to be flat on my back to get Bob to buy me a blue. Between friends, it's true blue. La Pat's Blue. I think the profile program is extremely important. We have a lot of patients on different medicines from different doctors. If we didn't have that profile system, we'd have no way of knowing what medicines were coming from which doctors when a drug interaction came up. I like to see people well. And if they're sick and there's just one little extra thing that I can do to, to make them better, then that's what I'm going to do. Otherwise, I don't need to have on this white coat. In making an artistic statement, one's personal aroma shouldn't do the talking. So I use Right Guard Sports Stick with maximum protection. A true artiste should be known for inspiration, not perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. When it comes to sports, HTS covers all the angles. If you're not watching HTS, you don't know what you're missing. Home team sports coverage of Washington Capitals hockey is brought to you by... Labatt's Blue, the crisp, clean taste of Canada's favorite beer. Between friends, it's true blue, Labatt's Blue. By your nearby Sears installed home improvement professionals, the most trusted name around the house. And by Safeway, come see the difference at Safeway. Well, the difference in that first 20 minutes, a power play goal by Michael Pobaca. The Capitals out shooting the Flyers and lead 1-0 on this Sunday afternoon matinee, and uh, we welcome you back, Jeff Rimmer, along with Craig Lachlan. And Craig, your thoughts of that first 20 minutes of play? A rather lengthy period, I might add. It sure was, and it started out very tough. Two minutes into the game, a couple of fights, a lot of heavy hits, and I thought the Capitals really showed a lot of spirit by standing them up in the neutral zone to turn off with some strong hits, Hatcher with some strong hits, that a fence are standing up, the forwards are back-checking very well. A solid period by the Capitals. Let's kind of look at that head and shoulders shot chart, first from the Washington Capitals perspective, one goal on the eight shots. Yes, they had eight shots. They got some good chances in tight to the left of the net, five chances. But other than that, Hextall played a pretty solid period, clearing the puck quickly out of the zone. The Capitals did score on the power play. And Kevin Hatcher, the key man, he got the blue line. That's the key. When you're on the power play, you've got to get to the blue line. Kevin Hatcher carries it over the blue line. And if we hold it here, John Drews is forcing this defenseman to take a look at him. Then Michael Pavonka at the far side waits for Hatcher, waits, waits. And if we hold it here, we've got one, two, three, four flyers. And it's a beautiful pass. His 39th assist in the season, and Michael Pavanka goes in, and Hextall commits early, and Pavanka pulls it to his forehand and throws it into the empty net. And from the Washington Capitals head and shoulders shot chart, let's take you back to the Flyers shot chart. The Flyers with a total of six shots. The Capitals really cutting down on the shots against. They really didn't allow a lot of shots when they played the Oilers the other night. But this afternoon, only six shots in the period. If you're holding the Flyers, a team like the Flyers, to only six shots in the period, you're playing very well defensively. And this afternoon's shot chart brought to you by Head & Shoulders because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Let's rejoin Al Koken at ice level, Al. All right, thanks, Jeff. A couple things. Uh, one, as we talked about, the, the Capitals' key on that power play, 
They didn't have to dump the buck in. Craig Lachlan mentioned that Kevin Hatcher gaining the zone. A little crisscrossing action when the Capitals don't have to dump the puck and because the Flyers stack those four men up at the blue line, they want you to dump it and let Hextall play it. Being able to work a play and gain the zone was a real key on that power play. The other thing, remember a couple years ago, the National Hockey League instituted a rule that if you, are, that if you instigate your second fight of the day, whether you instigated the first one or not, it doesn't make a difference. You are out of the game, so it's going to be very interesting to see if things calm down a little bit. I expect still physical play, bumping, but I wonder if the heavyweights who have already been involved in one fight this afternoon are going to take very great pains to make sure they do not get caught for instigating a second because that means they're done for the rest of the afternoon. Let's head back upstairs now to Jeff and Craig. Well, Al, I think the heavyweights are still going to be out there looking at each other looking to get involved physically but i think you're right they're going to stay away a little bit from the fisticuffs but i'm sure Cartner's tired cordic's tired after a fight some of the fights in that period the guys get very tired the fights take a lot out of a player and i think this period you're still going to see some contact a lot of contact but when the heavyweights are on the ice i think you're going to see more pushing and shoving than you may see fighting there's one of the flyers heading back to the sin bin kushner Serving off the remaining minutes of his five plus 10. Ron Hextall now working that net and the ice shavings. Ron Beaupre ready for the start of the second period of the opposite end. Ron Hextall, a little ritual before each period at the goal, taps his goal post, makes sure he's trying to get ready and focus mentally on the game. Underway here in the second period, Johansson works it to the Flyers' line. Samuelson now, lead pass for Ricci, crosses the line, tied up by Hatcher, gets it to Craven. Craven looking for Mellenby, turned around by Ridley, play goes right on. Ridley with one hand for Cicerelli, lead pass for Kelly Miller. Hatcher up in the play. Kevin Hatcher takes for the turn, he scores! still getting back into their seats. A great two-on-one for the Caps. What the super two-on-one. Kevin Hatcher coming back from his defensive position. Murray Craven doesn't get him. He stops skating. He can't hook on to Hatcher. And Hatcher picks up his 17th goal of the season. An assist in the first period. He's jumping up in the play by Kelly Miller. Another great pass. But the key there, you've got to drive to that net. And Kevin Hatcher stepping forward and driving to that net. And a beautiful pass by Kelly Miller. Goal number 17 on the year. Miller, a well-earned assist. And Cicerelli also with an assist on the goal. Caps lead 2-0. Play underway. Palanca leads it for John Bruce. Play is made by Hextall. From the corner, fired right on. Now Lawler dumps it behind the net. Picked up by John Bruce. He has it tipped away by Lottle. Locked up down the ice. After it, like Waller, the cap. Waller, it around on the boards for John Bruce. Bruce in the lead pass, 2-5 for Pavaca. Murphy steps up. In the corner, McComb. Comes it into Washington in. Around the board. Then Bergman looking for it. Murphy has it for the Flyers. Right out of the stick of Pavaca, tipped away. Waller unable to prevent it from entering the Washington zone. Pavaca throws a hit. Pat Murray, Murray up rather slowly, on his feet, backhands it for Jensen. Jensen centering it in front, off the skate of John Bruce. Bruce down the right wing, Bruce to center, all by himself, four flyers on him. John Bruce turns away from Murray. Now see some Capitals step up in the play, but Flyers able to clear the zone as Barron beats for Jensen at center, across the line. Jensen turns away from Johansson. Works it cross ice for Barron. He looks for the return feet on the right wing, but the Capitals Christian takes it. This is a check there from Barubi. Caps play the zone off Allen May. Acton now. Tied up by May. Barubi carries it in. 
Offside the call. Now Acton and May. Having a few words. Acton with a little shove. And Acton, the type of player that likes to try to make you take a penalty. He talks a lot when he's on the ice. He talks to everybody involved out there. He's having a very good season. After the 81-82 season in Montreal, scored over 30 goals, hasn't really produced offensively on, in Minnesota or with the Flyers, but he's playing solid defense, and he's getting some key goals for the Philadelphia Flyers. Acton, Berube, and Lacombe up front. Samuelson, Karkner on the blue line. Hunter with Christian. And Alan Bay from the drive. Acton wins it, but the Flyers must retreat. And Karkner for Samuelson. Entering fast for Acton. Danielson has to step up in the play and feeds to Acton who retreats inside his own line. Now it's Karkner. He's center on the backhand. Finds the offensive zone. Cap standing up. And it's knocked out high in the air by Alan May right into a fire zone. And Hepstall will steer it behind the net. Danielson for Berube. Waller backhands it right back in the flyer. Danielson again around the net. For Acton, tip to Berube at center. Berube across the line. Takes the hit from Hatcher along the boards. Christich coming back. Christich around the net. For Hunter. Looks to neutralize. Knocked down by Melody. Right out of the stick of Ricci. Ricci tied up along the boards. On the near side, Hunter takes the hit. Trying to dig it free is Christich. Work free now. And down the ice, back into the flyer end. Cap change on the fly. For Murphy. Murphy, the lead pass for Craven across the line, drops one for Melendy. Melendy right on, both trade the rebound, backhanded wide. On the far side by Ricci. Back come the Capitals, it's Kiprios. Kiprios with the backhand. Waddle tried to glove it, goes all the way to Hextall, he steers to the near side, Kiprios cuts it off. Takes the hit along the board. That's some help now from Tippett. Now Hanson pinching here. Tying up. Melendy, puck scores free. Kiprios is dumped. Play goes on. Waddle works it high in the air and down the ice, where it's cut off by Johansson out of the stick of Kevin Hatcher. Hatcher sidesteps the check, finds Kiprios. His drive off Waddle to the corner. Cicerelli steps into Waddle. Turned around. Cicerelli's still on his feet. Comes free with a puck. Here's Cicerelli. Around the net. Walks right in. And through the goal mouth, Hextall just let it go. Excuse me, Jeff Cicerelli trying to wrap around because he's using his feet, but the capital forwards kicking the defenseman for the Philadelphia Flyers. Really for Miller and a drive is high over the net. Cicerelli takes the hit. Hextall with the loose puck drives it the length of the ice and into the Washington zone. First back to Tarnov. He'll touch, icing the call. 15-24 left to go here in the second period. some four checking Nick Kiprios taking the defenseman in front allowing Dino Cicerelli to come out front and slide it he tried to slide it far side Hextall just got a piece of his stick but that's the key when you're around that net hit somebody letting your forward walk out and try to stuff it Locker wins the face off Berglund tied up but gets it back to Iafrady at the point Iafrady for Bruce with a drive deflected up into the crowd lucky souvenir for a Caps fan here in attendance this afternoon. Caps completing a four-game homestand. And three games on the road. The Caps head west. Not too hard to tell. They're enjoying the festivities here this afternoon, <laughs> Sure are. On the face-off, Samuelson works it out of his own zone. Feeds to Lacombe. I have freighted to the far side. Eric Smith tied up by John Drews. I have freighted takes a hit. 
Sutter gets it back to the point. Parker with a one-timer through traffic. Bopre seeing it all the way. Leaves for Tatarna. Tatarna for Berglund. Berglund trying to clear the result. Garrett Smith directs the shot. It goes wide. I think Tatarna for the catch now. Leads ahead. Berglund couldn't control. So Vaca play whistle down. And some penalties upcoming here. Lacombe trying to get to Tatarnov. He's being ushered off to the penalty box. Michael Tatarnov playing very physical tonight against the Flyers. He's going to get called for an elbowing penalty. 5-16, the time of the elbowing penalty. Tatarnov working in the corner, gets the penalty. And he gets called for the elbowing penalty. You don't really see it coming up. And then he gets it for the elbow. And the referee really keying on Michael Tatarnoff after that first elbowing penalty in the first period. There's a look at Coach Terry Murray, who lost his first game since assuming the coaching reins the last time these team, two teams met, which was at the Spectrum. Had a 6-1 Flyers win that I didn't think was really indicative of the score. Much closer, but Hextall had a big game that, that evening. Play underway, the Caps. Another short-handed situation. Nobody's on here. Murphy. Leading the Flyers attack to the line. Deep to center. Throws it on the wing here for Lottle. Drops it past for Ricci. Checked by Hatcher. Ends up behind the net. Mike Ridley coming in and driving it down the ice. Here's Mullenby. On the back end for Waddle. Waddle to Ricci. He couldn't control. Myers must again regroup. Aggressive forechecking. A wonderful situation for Washington. Raven. And here for Murphy. It's too far. Johansson steps up and drives it back to the blue line. Now it's Craven. Crossing the Washington line for Ricci. Melody standing on the doorstep. Now behind the net. Melody tied up by Johansson. Craven works it off the net. Right to the Capitals, Ridley. And the Caps able to clear the zone as Murphy couldn't control. Murphy being chased by Miller. 48 seconds left in the minor penalty. This is Waddle. With Gord Murphy at center. Murphy across the line. Looking for Pat Murray. Murray tied up. Johansson gets it to Miller. He backhands it. Down into the Flyers' zone. Flyers will get some fresh legs. The Caps as well. This is Pat Murray. Throwing it ahead for Shell Samuelson. He races down the right wing. Samuelson around the net. Tied up by Johansson. Work to the boards. Drews clears to the point, but not out. Keith Acton. Ahead here for Jensen. Jensen to Samuelson. Samuelson winds up through traffic. Blocked by Johansson. I afraid he sends it to the corner. Then throws a hit there on Jensen. Pat Murray to Jensen. Jensen turns. Feeds to Acton on the half four. Teams are back at full strength. To turn off back in the play. Acton shot blocked by Johansson. And here's a breakaway for Tatarna. Tatarna in. Shoots. Hextall with a save. Back come the Flyers. Kartner. For Pat Murray. To the right wing. Hunter steps up. Drives it right on Hextall. Hextall. Here's it to Kartner. Cicerelli tied up. Pat Murray for Acton. He finds Jensen at center with Acton. Two on two. Across the line. Leaves the pass there for Acton. Acton trying to work to the net. Cut off by Hatcher. Bullbreak gets it to Lawler. Lawler works it off the glass. And it ends up on the flyer bench. 11.59. Here to go in the second period. Caps by two. And this is our 1991 Chevy S10 EL. Let me point out a few features. Electronic fuel injection, power front disc brakes, rear wheel anti-lock brake system, double wall steel, front and rear. Five speed, full gauges, tinted glass. What do you think? So, uh, what do I get for this price? Uh, let me show you. Electronic. The 91 Chevy S10 EL. For value, more people are winning with today. 
Delta Tarnoff for the Caps all over the ice tonight. He picks up a couple of elbowing penalties so far, really standing up. But Kelly Johansson sacrifices on a hard shot from Keith Acton. And Michael Tatarnoff coming out of the penalty box, outskates. KJL Samuelson comes in alone on Hextall, fakes it a little bit, and then goes to his backhand. But the backhand shot with those big curves, he can't get it up as quick. He tried to get it up, and it just does hit Hextall's left hand. Mendes takes a check along the boards from Waller, off on the opposite side. Barron works it in front. Hex and rather, Beaupre makes the save, and back from the Capitals as they dump it through an opening down right on Hextall. Works along the glass as Hunter throws a check on Fendis. This is Lacombe. Lacombe gets it to Sutter. Sutter's drive. Beaupre's got it. Juggles it. Holds on. Sutter and Hunter have a few words. They are separated. Alan May involved as well. Dale Hunter really crunching some defense and follows the puck, waits till he passes it, and then drills Fenvis behind the net. The Capitals waiting for them. Even when they get rid of the puck, you're allowed a couple of seconds in there to finish your check, and Dale Hunter's finishing his checks all over the ice tonight. Also finishing his shift by skating over to the bench and having a few words with some of the Flyers. No love loss between these two teams. Eleven twenty-eight to go. Provaca and Hatcher have scored for Washington. 2-0, Caps lead. Mike Ridley, Kelly Miller, and Dino Cicerelli up front. Iafradi and Tatarnov manning the points. Ricci and Ridley, except for this faceoff, his lines have been matched up most of the way this afternoon. From the draw. That ends up behind the net where Tatarnov throws it on the wing for Cicerelli to Iafredi. Iafredi to Kelly Miller at center with Ridley. Crossing the line, tipped off Kelly Miller's stick. Craven overstates the puck. Here's Miller. And he couldn't go. They finally whistled down. Miller tied Miller. up there. Sorry, excuse me. Jeff Kelly Miller for the Caps, acting captain, getting some time on the power play, playing with Mike Ridley on the power, the power play. They play so well, killing a penalty. Terry Murray trying him also on the power play. There's Murray Craven, who was a doubtful starter this afternoon. He was cross-checked against Vancouver. Did practice yesterday, and it was only the morning skate, or actually the pregame skate here, that made uh, Craven the definite this afternoon. And they expect a lot more production out of him. He's a deceptive skater, but very, very... Very good hand skills. He passed extremely well. Enjoyed a lot of success against the Capitals. Harkness. Going in ahead here for Samuelson. Right back to Harkness. Sidesteps the check from Cicerelli. On the wing for Acton. Acton across the line. And he's driven to the board. By Tatarna. Through the goal mode. Harkner. Takes a hit from Kelly Miller. Caps try to clear it. Down the wing. Ridley. Tied up by Acton. Play goes right on. Fans here feel penalty should have been drawn. Jensen. Tied up by Miller. A lot of clutch and grab right now. Here's Tatarna. Gets it ahead here for Aya Frady. Aya Frady to Ridley. Ridley from the board. Throws it in front. Off a of player. And Hextall had to be shot. Tatarna at the left point. Looking. Off Kiprios. Back come the Flyers. It's Acton. Skating in across the line. Turned around by Kiprios. And we've got a penalty. Koharski let a lot go, but he calls this one. We'll step aside, 10-14 to go. Snow, incredible snow. Oh, our sight, <laughs> huh? Just our first trip to America's premier ski resort. Hey, what do you think? Black, huh? Yeah. I can see you working the main lodge tonight there in the romantic glow of a roaring fire. Your danger takes its toll. Andrew. Tis the season for the flakes that don't melt. I shampoo every morning. Shampoo till spring with an ordinary shampoo. Won't work like this. You use head and shoulders. You don't have dandruff. Nothing gets by you, does it? Head and shoulders, <laughs> because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. A lot of action over at the bench, between the Capitol bench and the Flyer bench. Both coaches talking to the referee. Next all over at the bench, having a few words. 
also with his teammates, but a lot of action around the two bench, and Paul Holmgren up on the bench, Terry Murray down at ice level, right close to the gate. Holmgren's up on the bench. Terry Murray talking to the linesman as we got to look at the replay here in the penalty call. And Nick Kiprios for the Caps back checking on a streaking Keith Acton. And Keith Acton, one of the best at making a dive to call to cause a penalty. And he does a little dive, gets hooked from behind. And Nick Kiprios in the penalty box for hooking. Terry Carter has now made his way over to the penalty box. Koharski's talked to representatives from both teams. To Tarnov has been now ushered off the ice by Gord Grassi. What's this all about? I'm not sure. He had a few words with uh, Ron Hexel on the way to the locker room. I'm not sure. Something must have happened right at the bench. Both benches side by side. There could have been a few collisions well, over there. Two minutes for a bench monitor. And for the Capitals, number three, Mikhail Tarnoff gets a gross misconduct. Some of the calls is 946. Well, that's the event. Well, Michael Tatarnov must have done something. And the linesman, I think, called that one. But now, hold on. Here's Koharski back. Definitely the linesman saw something. And they informed Koharski and then inform the respective coaches. Well, now, if he's called a gross misconduct, that usually comes along with a suspension. A gross misconduct is any, um, when you have anything that's not the good for the game of hockey. also carries a two-minute unsportsmanlike conduct. So the Capitals will again be a man short. There's an additional two-minute minor penalty, plus the gross misconduct, plus the original penalty to Kiprios. Now, gross misconduct, Jeff, usually carries It'll be reviewed by the league. It sometimes carries a suspension, but also when you have a gross misconduct, Michael Tatarnoff could have said something to the linesman, maybe pushed the linesman, maybe signaled something with his stick or his hand towards the linesman or the referee. And in that situation, the referee has the, ob has the right to call a gross misconduct. So if he's just yelling and screaming at the referee, there's not going to be a gross misconduct. He might only get a 10-minute. A gross misconduct is above that. It's something that happens above just yelling and screaming and swearing at the referee. It's if you continue on and if you maybe shove or push a linesman. So the face-off now in the Washington zone. And again, I believe that Either Brassiker or Murphy made the call. Let's see about Koken to find out any more for us as this period continues. Terry Murray still wanting a further explanation. So Harsky informing him now. He skates right over to the Washington bench. <laughs> Al Koken downstairs has got an update on the situation, Al. All right, uh, Jeff, the best I can figure, uh, we understand that uh, while Ron Hexel was skating off on that delayed penalty, he and Mikhail Tatarnov had an exchange of words. Apparently, Mikhail's English is getting a lot better. Uh, my lip reading got pretty good here as Mikhail was skating off. He had a, a few choice words to say to Ron Hexel as well, but apparently it was that altercation with Hexel that got him the gross misconduct. We're at the benches. All right. From the faceoff, again, the Flyers are on the power play. Waddle at center. 
Cross ice for Murphy. Murphy looking to lead. The Flyers into the offensive zone, but it's knocked down by Johansson. He ties up the Flyers. Off Kelly Miller's stick. Here's Ricci for Craven. Top of the circle. Craven back to Ricci. Ricci tied up by Johansson. He's all over him. And it's worked around the boards and down the ice. Here's Murphy. Murphy for the Flyers. His own line. Gets it to Lotto. Lotto now gains the offensive zone. Drives it in. Beaupre leaves for Johansson. The Caps again able to clear it to neutralize. This is Lotto. Looking for Melendy. Melendy being chased by Johansson. Got a very strong game. Lord Murphy to Melendy. Melendy top of the circle. Let's one go through traffic. Beaupre the save. And it's Kelly Miller off the boards for Ridley at center. Mike Ridley, two on one. Again, Kevin Hatcher with him. Ridley looking for Hatcher in front. Fires a shot that Hextall is able to stop, and Hatcher regains it. Kevin Hatcher to Christens. Right back to Hatcher, and he's back to neutralize. Great work by the Capitol. Sabrin at center. For Dimitri Christens, and over the line, offside the call. Ridley just to the flyer side of the blue line. That's the offside call. Well, Mike Ridley did a lot of work in that shift, and he was so tired he could hardly get to the bench to get into the gate. He gets caught from the offside, but some great work by the Capitals. Mike Ridley trying to catch his breath on the bench, but some good work, but they, they're holding on to the puck, allowing Hatcher to jump up in the play. Mike Ridley slows down a little bit. Coming down on Murphy, slows down, waiting for Hatcher. Then he tries to slide it under the stick of Murphy, who put his stick down to protect the puck. Good play. Kevin Hatcher then carries it out of the zone, but the Capitals really controlling the puck, passing it around, killing the penalty. Pavanka, Keith Acton for the faceoff. 41 seconds left here in the minor penalty. This is Barron. Right in front of Hextall, leads the rush to center. Dumps it in. Off to the open corner. Sabrin works it off the glass. Knocked down by Samuelson at the blue line. Flyers still in the offensive zone. Jensen's tied up. Pat Murray takes a hit. Comes back to Samuelson. Looking for Murray, or rather uh, Barron at the other point. Now it's Acton. Acton behind the net. Caps throwing a couple of checks. Comes right back to the point. Samuelson knocks it down. For Jensen. Jensen to Murray. I afraid he's standing his ground. Acton takes a hit from Christian. Acton gets it to Jensen. Jensen to the point. Teams a full strength. Both ready to save. And the rebound ends up on the stick of Christian. She quickly clears to Pavaka. Pavaka off Kiprios. Samuelson beats to Jensen. Off I Afraidy ends up behind the Washington net. I Afraidy. Long lead pass too far for Nick Kiprios. Ends up behind the fly net. Touched by Murphy and icing the call. You can win two tickets to see the Caps play the Islanders on March 2nd. You can do it by signing up for an air hockey tournament at Callahan's in Frederick. Winner of the contest will be provided with tickets and transportation to and from the game. Dale Hunter with Cicerelli. And Tim Berglund. Another new line combination. Waller and Hatcher manning the point. The setter in the face-off circle against Dale Hunter. <laughs> the linesman now chasing both from the face-off circle. Berglund steps in for Washington. Norm Lacombe. No, well, now it's Garrett Smith for the fly. Smith wins the draw, comes back to the point, Fendus, through traffic in front, backhanded by Smith once, twice, and Beaupre holds on as it ends up, got a Flyers in the net, but the puck right there with Don Beaupre. I think that's the importance of winning the faceoff. The Capitals trying to set up the faceoff, but then Hunter and Sutter get thrown out. Berglund left to take the faceoff, he loses the faceoff directly to the point man and Derek Smith standing alone in front gets a couple of whacks at but then he's cleared out in front by Mike Lawler coming back taking the man and pushing him into the goal now we'll see if Hunter and Sutter can do 
doing right, but Hunter's not even going to get the chance, or is he? Yes, he will, because what Terry Murray's doing now is going to have two centers out there, Michael Pavonka and Dale Hunter, two veteran centers, just in case Dale Hunter's going to go in there, try to cheat as much as he can, so will Sutter, both very good face-off men, and if they do get thrown out, that'll allow Michael Pavonka to go in. Well, Hunter's out, and <laughs> here we see the Sorelli step up, but he'll get the uh, word that it'll be Pavonka. Fearless forecaster <laughs> on the draw. Pavaka wins it. Sutter takes the hit there from Waller. Pavaka works it on the board. Sorelli turned around by Fendus. Bucks for three. Here's Pavaka down the right wing. Pavaka to center with Hunter. Pavaka feeds to Waller trailing. Slowed by Hextall and he'll hold on. Capitals defense coming active tonight. They're getting up in the play, and Mike Waller gets a nice feed from Michael Pavaka. Has it labeled to the far catching glove side of Hextall, but Hextall, a stand-up goaltender, way out on the angle, not leaving him much room, and he catches it in his big catching glove. On Hextall shaking off the early season injuries and uh, the injuries that cost him most of last year. Back around the Flyers' camp. It could be one of their goaltenders. Pete Peters, the ex-capital, backing up today. And, of course, they have another healthy goaltender in Ken Reagan. Puck tip by Melody. Races after. Fires his shot. Goes to the far side. Bofre had the angle. Ricci throws it in front. Knocked down by Johansson for Dale Hunter. Hunter back to a speeding Johansson. Cross the line. Samuelson is there. Hunter keeps it in for Washington. Knocked down by Samuelson for Parkman. Parker has his pass intercepted by Christich. Christich uses it to Parker, and he's down the wing and over the line. Hatcher there to cut him off. Comes right back to Parker for Samuelson on the right point. Samuelson winds up with his shot. Oakley tied up in front, able to make the save, and back again comes Neil Hunter. Hunter drops it for Johansson. Johansson tied up, and Alan May lets his shot go that was deflected just wide. Hatcher from the right point. A late penalty up coming here now. And play whistle down, and a cross checking call. We'll have the power play when we return. The Caps 2, Flyers nothing. Let's say you're just walking along with a ticket in your pocket. The next day you could be a millionaire or with your own personal moon rocket. Everybody's got a dream. Capitals working the front of the goal, trying to get something going in front. He's lost his stick. Hextall's got it in his glove. He's trying to get it off him. And then Samuelson comes in and cross-checks him from behind. Hextall had his stick. Samuelson comes in and cross-checks him from behind. Samuelson in the penalty box for the Flyers for the cross-check. Ah, the price you've got to pay. <laughs> Ridley. Miller. Cicerelli up front. Hatcher and I afraid he on the points of this power play. Sutter and Acton up front. Murphy and Carton on the point. The face off. Murphy works it to the near side for Acton. Keep Acton. Down the right wing to center. Backhands it. Knocked down by Kevin Hatcher. He gives to I afraid. Sutter turned around behind the net. Quickly, Kelly Miller picks up the puck. He's down the right wing. Throws it on the left wing here now for I afraid in across the line. Knocked off his stick, Sutter with Acton. Feeds to Acton across the line, winds up. Kelly Miller gets a piece of it. Sutter tied up, otherwise he'd have had a shot at Beaupre. Kelly Miller again, back to Washington. Cicerelli straddling the blue line. Ridley to I afraid. I afraid he works it to the corner. Ridley now on the far shot. They bunch up. Derek Smith tries to dig it free. Hatcher tips it to Cicerelli behind the net. Here's Cicerelli for Kelly Miller. Ridley in front. Comes back to Hatcher. Cross ice for Aya Frady. Aya Frady back to Hatcher between the circles. He feeds to Miller. Miller to Hatcher. Hatcher's wrist shot. Knocked down in front. The rebound by Aya Frady. Oh, and with Hextall down, fired it wide. 
looking for the top corner. Hatcher to Kelly Miller. 48 seconds left in the minor. Miller back to Hatcher. A wrist shot. Knocked down. Aya Brady with a rebound. And somehow that one was deflected wide. Hatcher again from the point. Winds up. Hextall the save. Steered to the corner. Cicerelli takes a hit and an elbow from Murphy. He goes down, loses his helmet. Ridley sets up behind the net to Cicerelli. Cicerelli, a one-timer by Miller, and Hextall cuts that one off with 23 seconds left. The puck is fired the length of the ice. The Capitals really moving around the puck on the power play, playing an umbrella up top. The Philadelphia Flyers penalty killers really forcing the top man by getting beat on a two-time pass. Once back, once back in tight, and that beats the man going out. Four quality shots for the Capitals on that power play, and that will be it. Danielson's out of the box. Here's Johansson's shot. Hextall the save, and he's got it between his pads, and he'll hold on. and working that blue line, getting some good chances along with Ally Afredi and a nice pass from John Bruce through the crease of the box, hitting uh, hitting Kelly Johansson coming in from the blue line and a nice hard shot, but Hextall covers it up in the five hole. Great play by Kevin Hatcher, getting it on net. Traffic in front, Dino Cicerelli comes to Aya Freddy. He reaches for it, then tries to fire it into the top corner. And Ron Hextall leaning over with his glove. Ally Afredi can't believe he missed that. Hextall makes a glove save, and it ends up into the corner. No question. That one was labeled, and Hextall did get a piece of it. And you're right, Aya Freddy could not believe it. Hextall's not only a very good goalie, he's a good athlete. And he stretched his arm up. I afraid he skated back to the bench shaking his head because he thought he had the wide open neck. Hextall just reaches up, just gets a piece of it. Hextall's got some very fast moves. They were evident there. Here's Carter. Lead pass for Mellonby at center. Ricci and Craven with him. Puck dumped into the Washington zone. Trapped by Beaupre. Beaupre works it around on the board. Samuelson pitching it. Takes a hit there from Bergland. Kevin Hatcher on the back end. He's tied up by three flyers. Ricci now turns. Johansson's got him. And here's Berglund. Puts it right out of the six. Thrown out in front by Mellonby. Back come the Capitals. John Bruce to Pobaca. For Johansson across the line. Johansson to Pobaca. Pobaca. Oh, looking for John Bruce who has turned around. No penalty. Bruce dumped now in front of the flyer net. Again, no call. Craven sidesteps the check from Berglund. Samuelson steps up. Johansson trying to dig it free. Gets it to Hatcher. Flyers change on the go. Here's Hatcher to center. Dumping into the flyer zone. The Caps also getting some tough legs on as Hextall. Here's it around. For Barubi. Barubi on the backhand. Dumps it into the Washington zone. Kornick and Barubi on the ice. And icing is the call. Kordick and Barubi, side by side, nothing develops. Mm -hmm. As we get a look at Ken Saffron. Ken Saffron playing for the Capitals, coming over from Calgary in the trade. Played very well, steady. He's not a flashy guy. He doesn't have great foot speed, but he reads the plays well. And Terry Murray teaching him. Terry likes teaching his younger defenseman how to read the play, because a lot of this game is just knowing what the forward's going to try to do and anticipating and then picking up passes. Again, we may see a lot more ice time for Sabrin in the absence now of Michael Tatarnov, who left the game earlier on this period with a gross misconduct. So the cap's down to five blue liners. Three minutes and 12 seconds left to go here in the second period. Caps have quiet. Late game five of their seven game regular season series. A lot on the line in this one this afternoon. Barron behind the net. Throws it on the wing for Lacombe. Centering pass for Fenves. I afraid he misses. Backhanded by Tippett. Sutter takes a hit from Portico on the boards. Acting with the puck. Back here for Barron. Barron to center. Up to the open corner. Sutter races after. Beaupre there first. Here's to the near on the far side for Cordic. Hops over his stick. Shot from the point. Over top of the net. Around the glass. Back to neutralize. Fenves takes a hit from Kiprios. 
There's Smith looking for Sutter, but he was tied up by Cordic with a good defensive move. I afraid he now. Taking a hit from Derek Smith, still with the puck at center. Throws it on the wing for Kiprios. Kiprios misses a check from center. I afraid he with a good A nice play coming across the blue line. He sees the forward coming to check him. Then he drop, drops the puck right to Ally Afredi. And Ally Afredi, a very heavy slap shot. Beats Hextall between the five hole. Ron Sutter trying to make the check on Nick Kiprios. But Ally Afredi following up the play. All night, all this afternoon, the Capitals defense following up on the play, getting some good opportunities. And Ally Afredi, after missing that glorious opportunity earlier, drives it between the pads of Ron Hextall. Makes no mistake here. As he finds the five hole between the legs of Ron Hextall. And a big goal gives the Capitals a 3 nothing lead. Nick Kiprios draws an assist. And it's at 17.56. And here's a lead pass for Christmas. He's got a breakaway. All in the way. He draw assists and the Capitals with two minutes left in the period lead at 4-0. Oak ahead. I afraid Ahead here for Bergman. Bergman in center drops it for Povaka. Jack's third in the flyer zone. Hextall works it around on the boards. I afraid steps up. Backhands it. Jack's able to keep it in, keep it in as Bergman dumps it behind the net. Samuelson turned around by Drew. Here's Derek Smith. Smith Ahead for Sutter at Sutter. Sutter across the line. Kovacic tying him up. I have Brady. Double team. Flyers throw it in front to Craven. One save by Beaupre. Here's two. And this time he'll hold on. Dimitri Christian from Johansson and Hatcher. I talked to Don Bopright before the game. I said, what type of games are going to be today, Don? And he says he knows when he plays the Flyers, there's going to be a lot of pushing and shoving in net. They try to get him off his game. And he says, that doesn't bother me at all. What I want to prove today is I want to try to challenge Ron Hextall. And we get a look up into the skybox. And there's a surprise birthday party. Chrissy Harpo, sweet 16. We all send her happy birthday wishes up there to Chrissy. Bill Harpo, very proud father, head of production here at the Capitol Center. Well, there are just a small few of the crowd enjoying this hockey game here this afternoon. Raven gets it to Barron at the point. Knocked down by Johansson. Looking for Cicerelli, and he's fed him. One on one. Cicerelli waiting for some help. Turns, feeds. Looking for Miller, broken up by Fenvis. To Mellenby, less than a minute to go. Ellie Johansson is back. Solid game by Johansson. Here's Ridley for Miller with Cicerelli across the line. Miller gets it to Hatcher at the point. Hatcher being chased. Hextall makes the save. Rebound comes to Mellenby. Quickly fed to Craven. Back to Mellenby across the line. On the far side. Backhanded by Mellenby. Hatcher there to cut it off. For Ridley with Cicerelli. Two on one. Here's Ridley looking for Cicerelli. Broke it up, but Cicerelli gets it anyway to Ridley. And Hextall turns. He makes the save. Doesn't know where the rebound is, but the net 
comes off the moorings and plays the whistle down. A two on one, Mike Ridley trying to set up Dino Cicerelli. He did so well the other night against Edmonton. Dino Cicerelli getting a couple of nice tap-ins from the stick of Mike Ridley. Seventeen shots on goal for the Washington Capitals here in the second period. We're not finished yet. The Flyers with 11. It's more wide open period, but it's been all Washington adding to their 1-0 first period lead with three here in the second. Twenty-four seconds left to go here in the period. Face off to Hextall's left. From the draw. Tip it up, ended. Samuelson skates to the line. Throws it on the wing here for Lacombe across the Washington line. Lacombe being chased by Sabrin. Around the net, Lacombe still with the puck. Back in for Carter. Carter's drive through traffic goes wide on the near side. Winding up is Kiprios, clears to neutral ice. Four seconds left. Carter turns at center. Carter puts it on the wing for Samuelson. The horn goes to end the second period. And after Michael Pavaka's goal in the first, Kevin Hatcher, ally of Brady, and Dimitri Kristich scoring here in the second period. The Washington Capitals four, the Flyers no score. This is the Home Team Sports Television Network.